Welcome, Tanzi. Tawao, bonjour, bonjour. My name is Jake Moore. I'm the director of the University Art Galleries and Collection here at the University of Saskatchewan. We're here on Treaty 6 territory, and I wish to both acknowledge that territory and um, do more so. I wish to honor the land, not just acknowledge it. And I wish for us to understand that when we make these acknowledgments, the words themselves are not enough. They must come with reparations and with decisions to work together and alongside. At University of Saskatchewan, we've been gifted the term Manasahitouin, which in both Michif and in Cree means to walk alongside, to walk it together. It's our intention that we get there, though there's been many bumps along the way. In these past recent days, we have um, become uh, aware of the evidence of what we've known for a very long time. The children that have been found are now confirmation of the works we still need to do together and the actions we need to do in commemoration, reparations, and true conciliation. We need to come to a place where we understand one another. It's my incredible gift to be here with elders and with messages and with colleagues and friends that share in this goal. And we are surrounded here at this foyer of the Murray Building, the entrance to the Snell Grove Gallery, where we're surrounded by a work that's been created in community that we deliver each month, well, each moon, to be clear. Because in the Hiawan calendar, the lunar calendar, it's not a monthly affair, it's a lunar affair. Each moon, uh, it tells a story of what is happening in the place that we will see it from. So from this point, we have chosen one dialect that has been inscribed in the stones, but we're grateful to always have the presence of others that come from other sites, uh, also throughout this territory, that give us more information about that. Again, it's my pleasure to welcome you here, have this opportunity to speak with you through the ether, and soon we will be able to gather together on, on site. And I can't wait for you to see everything in person and come and touch the grandfathers. Um, so I will stop there. It will be my pleasure to introduce our elders today that have joined us on this path now for over a year and a half. Uh, Evelyn, <laughs> Florence Highway and Evelyn Linklater, thank you so much. Anuts Gagishagna Nashkumun. The Tamishat now are gagged and two teamak. Puiti old cheek. Nanashkumun. You give me the wishyak. Out a piece him. Kissiman to wiggy a wigwak. The Gisti de Mayak Nishnan Gagiti Wiak Hugumenongi Sidi Gatanan Gagido Pisimok Agua Pisim Gawi Matagimit Yego Open your piece, and see the gatanan, nishnan, utiute, gautiak, ki witnuk. Wish to a pit of the city gatio, and to timinan, a gutiute sawanuk. Wish to a mean a pit of utiute, capito teach, wish to a pit of the city gatio. Yago open your piece and case the gatayak. Our gogo menu can kiss the mayak. It was a better match. Nanas woman, mistake. It was a tinigi, hey, hey. So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the melting. Molting uh, moon, as the elder introduced, every tribe has a different name for it and the pronunciation as well, but it all means the same thing. We have 13 moons and all of them are grandmother moons. And there's a story behind that because grandmothers are very strong and this is an honor for them. So we want to thank everybody 
that invited us to the University of Saskatchewan to be able to say a little bit of history on our moon's molting moon. Because they can ask me now and to Timak in Tagagibit in Gagadota, Pitaxonia, Kimitoxonia, Kai Hai. Uh, my name is Sandy Bonnie, and I work with Indigenous Student Achievement Pathways in the College of Arts and Science. And uh, it's my pleasure to um, to introduce a very special guest today um, during the molting moon. Um, for those who don't don't know the word molting, what it means is is to release. So birds molt when they release their feathers. Um, I have a lot of sparrows in my backyard that are molting their baby feathers right now, and they look very funny. Um, but it's a time when when they're uh, they're growing in their flight feathers and a time of change and transformation. So I'm pleased during the molting moon to be introducing someone very special to share a message as we install the, the slate tread. Born in Prince Albert a National Park 81 years ago, Maria Campbell is a Métis writer, playwright, filmmaker, teacher, mom, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And among those roles, she also shares her time with us at U of S. Currently Indigenous Cultural Advisor to the College of Law, Maria has been a mentor to USASC students and her colleagues for over 30 years, with past roles as Indigenous scholar and writer in residence, lecturer, and assistant professor teaching Indigenous literatures, creative writing, and Métis history in the College of Arts and Science. In the biography that I was sent to prepare this introduction, it shared that Maria speaks three Indigenous languages, Cree, Michif, and Soto, and I think we could add to that list um, the languages of Indigenous art, advocacy and compassion. A dedicated community worker and advocate for Indigenous rights and the rights of women and children for many years, Maria also serves as an elder with the Saskatchewan Aboriginal Justice Commission. She's received numerous awards for her contributions, including seven honorary doctorates and most recently um, an honorary doctorate of letters from, from the U of S, as well as an Inspire Award, a Gabrielle Dumont Order of Merit, um, she was made an Officer of the Order of Canada in 2004, received a Trudeau Fellowship at the University of Ottawa in 2013, and has been inducted into the Saskatchewan Theatre Hall of Fame. And that there's probably a longer list that I, <laughs> that I don't have. Um, in May of this year, during the Sakipaka Wipasim Leaf Budding Moon, Maria was also awarded the Saskatchewan Lieutenant Governor's Lifetime Achievement Award for the Arts, recognizing her contributions to theatre, through works prepared for both stage and the screen. But I think to many of us, she's best known for her 1973 memoir, Half Breed, which was republished in 2019. She has authored dozens of plays, as well as se seven other books, and Maria's not done. So I hear she's currently at work on an eighth book, and I know that she has many more stories and insights to share with us, and we're so lucky to have her bringing a message to our campus community today. Nasku mane pevi sam gavi ano da nista ga pea chimo ya no ma pisse ma ke a chimo ya ko ego ka pisku e chiku isko ak ko kum no ak wista on nasku ma ak no kum mane kin pai miwe ta ko me ki me ki pehot am e ki miwe ta o tem na ka pa mausot ego ego an sisipsa wa mane ki pa mo sakena ego ma ke mo yo kwa wa pisem ko taka wa ke gatse pe e pe wan kisksian tan skaito anen ma ma ka pas pas kwa pas kwa pas kwa ma te switchen pas kwa pas pas ka wi I want to thank the gallery for asking me to be here. And I'm, um, I'm really nervous because I prepared for, uh, for the hatching moon and I uh, didn't realize that this, <laughs> this was July. Time is moving so fast. But I'm really happy to be here and... This last uh, month, uh, the month of June, the month of July and May and uh, August, always remind me of my great-grandmother. 
My great-grandmother looked forward to this time of the year because she was very old. She was 103 when she passed away. And um, she liked to sit in the sun, so she would wait and wait until the June sun would come and she'd go outside. And she loved eating duck eggs and, and uh, picking strawberries. Those were her two favorite things to do. And uh, she didn't like July all that much because it was so hot, and she didn't like uh, to see little birds with no feathers. She felt sorry for them. But for all of us kids, that was this was the best time of the year because we could run around and, and um, we would look for feathers. We'd find feathers on the ground wherever we went. We'd find feathers floating in the air. We'd find them in the water. We'd find them in the bush. And uh, we'd pick them. I can remember coming home with, they used to make little grape baskets about so big. They were Concord grapes, I think, little wooden baskets. And I'd have one of those for picking berries, but I'd come home with that full of feathers, all kinds of feathers. And we'd make, uh, we'd make chiefs uh, hats for ourselves and uh, put them in our hair and put them in our clothes, do all sorts of things uh, to use them for for decoration. And um, I always think of this month as, you know, school would be over and we would be able to be out on the land, and the land was so beautiful. Um, we would travel around with our grannies, with our great-grandmother and our, our two grandmothers, and take them berry picking along the river. And, and uh, they couldn't walk very fast, so we'd have to look after them. One of them was almost blind. And, and so I have lots of really beautiful memories about this time of the year, and I really look forward to it. Um, I miss my, my grandmothers. I think about them this, this time of the year because they were, they were midwives and healers, and uh, this has been COVID, and so uh, they worked uh, all through the, the summer and the winter in, in, um, in, the nine, in 1917 during that flu epidemic. And, uh, and so I've been thinking about them this last, uh, this last spring and, and this winter. But I, when I think of June, July, and August, I think about those months that have to do with midwives, you know, the, the moons that have to do with, uh, with birthing, and, uh, and rebirth, because when little birds molt, it's rebirth, and it's rebirth for us too. And so I think about that, and I think about their work and, and how important they were in our community. And when I think about truth and reconciliation and, and art and, and healing, because for me those are the same things, I think about their work and, um, and remember that when they outlawed midwifery and healing, that they were no longer, uh, you know, it was a whole way of life was finished for us because it meant that uh, we had to go to the hospitals, which were a long way far from us, and we also had to start using funeral homes. And and the, the camaraderie that women had where they would all come together and, and create art uh, really changed because the teachings that they would share about the moon uh, were not, uh, you know, were not a part of it anymore. Those things, uh, if you don't do them all the time, they, they get lost. And so uh, for a time, they were almost lost in our community. And, and gradually, those, those things have been reclaimed. So when I think about this this year, I think about that. And I think about these months as being that special time for midwives and healers, because they would pick medicines. All of the first medicines would be picked, and uh, all of the work that they would that they would do all winter and gather together to trade when they would go to celebrations. So um, you can't separate art from from healing and from birthing or from death. It's all part of the same work that grandmothers did. And the moon was very important part of their of their life. Um, um, 
ai man mana ka mam to nem magik no chues ho gan gegi go gegi ni ta to sket se gegi kan we magik ta sinim no e ko mi cheta ni gagi man ni ta we o mai ka pat ni che ke ko to ta ke ga iwa nas ka ma ko ta pe to ta ko ya ko ta ai ai ma si